Hello, I'm going to be making some clog boots today and last video I talked about the sole units and how I'm making these now with a far higher toe spring, toe lift or cast, whatever you want to call it and I've achieved that by bending this last just by closing the spring very slightly to get the toe up. So this is a boot last. I've got my tipping point just behind the ball of the foot so that these should roll quite nicely. That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> we'll see what happens. So I'm going to do something now rather sort of unusual in terms of how to put the leather upper on here. I'm going to wet mould it. So I'm going to use quite thick vegetable tanned leather. And the leather I'm using, it'll be a natural russet and it comes in at just over two and a half millimetres. Uh, but yeah, so reasonably thick leather. If I didn't wet mould it to my last, I think it would just be too thick to get around the last nicely. I have made a pattern which I'm trying to keep to the traditional principles and it's a very simple pattern. It's two pieces of leather. And to get this pattern, what I've actually done is I have taken a pair of my existing boots to get a bit of an idea. But if you recall, when I did a video series on easy shoemaking, I pulled apart a pair of chucker boots. So I have actually used those to help quite a lot as they were in my size and I didn't like the, like the angular side here, I didn't like the lack of eyelets, but they were otherwise actually quite suitable. So I've increased the lever down below to, for going around the wooden sole, I've changed the front section, but that's basically how I've done it. So it's a bit of a sort of mishmash, but I think it will work. I've done enough of this fiddling around now, I think that you, know, you, you start to get confident, it's, uh, and that's probably where I'll start falling down. So I'm going to pop my pattern piece down. I'm going to add a margin around my pattern so that I can then hammer the leather, nail it onto this ledge. So just like before really with the clogs. But So when I come to, I'll do a full first marking of this with my little scratch wall where I just go around and I will just mark it like that. And then what I'll be doing is where I need to have that overlap to go over the wooden clog sole. I'll add something like um, three quarters of an inch, 18 mil. It's not got to be hugely accurate, but enough of a margin that I can pull it over. So to cut it out, I'm just using this little clicker knife with its little eagle's beak, this little blade on it. Quite nice for doing curbs. <laughs> I um, got to be careful here. I was cutting out um, some bits of wood the other day and I should have had my protective gloves on. I was using an axe and I just managed to skim the tip of my finger. I was very lucky it wasn't worse. But um, yeah, a little sober warning to me to sort of watch out and be careful. I'm just dotting around now to mark the lever underneath where the overlap is for the seam. So this is where the sides will come round. And what I'll also do in a minute is I will skive uh, just underneath these so they're nice and sort of flat inside. Same thing that side as well. So it just means inside the shoe those seams won't be bulky. The other thing I need to do before the, like the sew up is to put in my eyelets. So I have little dots here marking my four eyelets. and I'll just run down those. I then have some little antique copper eyelets with washers and a setting tool. So 
So the eyelets will just go in there. They're quite a nice size because they'll take a fairly um, thick lace, which I think will suit the style. This is all fairly rural. There's nothing very refined about this, but I'm taking the view clogs are working type shoes. And I quite like the sort of more casual aspect, I suppose, of this kind of leather work. So these are the little backing washers I'm just putting on now. And that will hold all of that. They should be quite secure because this leather is reasonably thick. So I don't think there's any problem there. And then all you have to do is have the little base anvil, a setting tool, and the setting tool is just guided there and it clamps it down. So knock it in and that's a nice little firm eyelid. A nice little row there. I'll do the same on the other side and get those done. So there we are, eyelets are done so I can now glue prior to sewings, uh, the, the, this part, the quarter, onto the vamp. So I'm going to glue that to that and then I'll sew it. I'll do the same to the other side, glue to hold it in position and then sew it. So the glue will sort of hold it while I'm sewing. I mean it will hold it beyond that as well. Uh, place it in position, hammer it down. And then what I've done, I've put a couple of very faint lines on here to scratch them on. I'll use that for the sewing guide. So go to the sewing machine next. So I'm going to put a couple of seams down here. I'm just turning the machine by hand where it's a very short run. It's a bit more accurate than me trying to position it. There we are. I'm also at a weird angle because of the camera, <laughs> but never mind. come for another straight run. So that's my seam sewn in and what I'll do I'll just pull the threads through to the back and just tie them over and um, burn them off. Now at the moment obviously it's all a very very loose fit. So what I'm going to do you see I'm not going to get that down to shape very well it will just go really sort of crinkly. I'm going to dip all of this in some warm water for a couple of minutes so just a sort of lukewarm water let it soak in some of the water for a couple of minutes and then I'll let it rest for another couple of minutes and then I will be trying to stretch it over this last. So that's had a soak and a shake and I've just put the shoelaces sort of loosely in there. And what I'm going to do first of all is find my centre back and get this roughly in alignment with the top of the last. So already I can see I can trim a bit off the back to bring that down. So probably don't need a huge amount off. But I will just trim the bulk at the moment. I think that's broadly where I want to be. I'm trying to sort of balance up the quarters. So I'm looking from the back and then thinking, right, they'll get pinched in each side about there. And is it roughly the same? 
So a little bit of manipulation, that's fine. And then I'll just pop one of my little lasting nails in there. So essentially, having worked from the back, I will then go and get my toe set in. Right, I'm now looking, making sure my last is still in the correct position. And I'm wanting to get this front, even if it's temporarily, into position. So I'll start pulling some of this around a bit, trying to make sure the whole time that the alignment looks reasonable. So I've got a few here now going, going in at the sort of back and side, each side. I think I need a few more. But um, what I'll, I'm then doing, I'm sort of pulling it at the front a bit more. I'm trying to get this shape over the toe. And you can see actually how the lever is beginning to stretch. I need to manipulate this a bit more. So I'm sort of doing a combination of working it with my fingers and pulling with my lasting pliers and trying to stretch the lever while it's wet. Once it's dry, it really will not be stretchable in the same way. So I really do need to get this down. Obviously, when it comes to the finished boot, I'll be attempting to proof all of this with various waxes and sealants but at the moment I just want to get it into shape. So I'll keep on. So having got it sort of in position I'm now just going over it once again and just trying to pull it a bit more. Just a little bit of refinement. more stretch. So there you are, all sort of stretched over and pinned on. I feel that's quite encouraging because I think it is following the form of the last quite nicely. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. What I'll do, I say I'll let this dry now and then I'll pop some nails around the edge, <laughs> get the last out, which could be entertaining. And I probably this time put a little bit of a gimping top edge over with a few more nails. So uh, trying little different things here just to see what happens. But I think that's going to be the approach and I'll be doing all of that in the next video and probably at the rate I'm going, I'm going to dive them as well. Uh, but be getting pretty close to a try on. So moving quite quickly on these, which is nice. Anyway, hope to see you in the next video. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. In fact, don't consider it, just do it. And thank you very much, uh, got to 100,000 subscribers. So thank you very much for that. And I'm waiting for a silver award to arrive in the post, which is rather good fun. Anyway, <laughs> hopefully see you in the next video. Bye bye then.